Fra phrasing? Yeah. Oh, the doors don't work. <laughs> Four Zero out of ten. ten. Four out of ten. Globe <laughs> spinning. It's brilliant. <laughs> uh, I think I might remember that globe for the rest of my days. <clears throat> I love that even when the game has objectively, like, you know, redeemed itself by having some genuinely nice, like, good story and twists, you're still thinking about that fucking globe. It was the first thing to surprise me. <laughs> I, I predicted, I was like, oh, wouldn't it be great if it does this? And then it did it. And I was like, oh my god, it did it! Usually when a game does that, I get really angry. <laughs> yeah, but you made, you made an exception for this one, didn't you? Because it's so banal and not stupid. <laughs> right. Sick room. Mm. I really hope there's nothing incredibly dark in here. Jesus, they didn't clean up the blood all the way from then to there. Mm. <laughs> well, that's, that's probably how she remembers it. That's the thing. Again, if you're, if you're dealing with someone who has, like, severe trauma, like, everything is going to be worst-case scenario, you know? So there might, have, might not have been even bloody sheets. He just remembers a time where there might have been some on it, you know? Like I said, this is, it, it's a very, like, broad, like, sense of, like, unreliable narrator. Oh, the bird. Yeah. That's why the bird monster was out here. Yeah. Also, um, goes without saying that uh, Italian magazine was full of shit. Like, I've become a child and I've lost my cum button. So, <laughs> you know, there's nothing to do with bed child exploitation. Mm. Although, to be fair, that this game does go some very dark and horrible and unpleasant places. But it shies away from them in ways that are realistic mm -hmm. for trauma. Yeah. Like, in a weird way, it's it's a game that's it, it's. That kind of taboo of trying to do a game based around the subject matter, and in a way, in a, in a way, you do kind of have to stave off when you do that. Cool. You know? Leo, I'll let you choose up or down. Down. Ooh. Jonathan, I'll let you choose left or right. Mm, well, he's only left. Well, left, right. Oh, um, let's go with... Go, child? Yeah, well, they don't think... The inner court. <coughs> I doubt to be anything. I know it's where we buried brown, but this would have this would have predated this, wouldn't it? Or is this where we no, found it's where brown? we were buried alive. Hmm. God, those homunculi in the window was great. Yeah, <laughs> great visual. For all its faults, I actually really did enjoy this. You know what? Uh, like, I think the the last act kind of like definitely impressed me, because I can I think like I know from like from from our side we kind of like got we like well you got the kind of the gist of the combat, so it didn't feel as much of a as a as a as a torment. But then I think it's because we actually got like weapons that were easier, that were more effective as well, which would have helped. But overall, I think like. I think it was one of that chapter where we went back to the old house. That's I think where the the game got me back. I think. Mm. If Miss Martha had disappeared, there'd be there'd be there would have been no one to cook. If Clara had disappeared, there would have been no one to tend to our wounds. If Mister Hoffa had disappeared, there'd be no one to teach us. We can't live life eating snacks all day with no exercise or studying. Ah. If you look at it that way, even the aristocrat club needed adults around. Our world was so small. It was all a game. Mm. I should have been touching everything that was on the table <coughs> before. I'm yeah. sorry, guys. I'm not going back. But did you, did you, like, click it? Isn't there, yeah. that trigger? Ah, okay. Yeah. So, like, in the sick bed, there was probably... A couple of letters there. So this was Martha's room? Yeah, yep. that was from the police. Mr. Gregory Wilson. Dear ma'am, please forgive the delay in your response. 
In your letter, you reported suspicious activity on the part of Mr. Gregory Wilson. Oh. She was reporting Gregory to the police? That's, this is October 1930. We have come to the following conclusion. Yes, this is the 30s and he was a man in... Yeah, yeah. There is little to indicate that the said individual is connected to the recent kidnappings. Mr. Wilson is father to a son who closely matches the description in your letter. Therefore, we have determined that there is insufficient evidence to warrant further investigation. We appreciate your cooperation and understanding in this matter. <laughs> Anthony, Anthony Doolittle, Do Carrington Police. Obviously, my, my name is Martha Carroll, and I work at the Rose Garden Orphanage. This is 24 November. In the past month, I have spent six letters to your attention, but have yet to receive a response. Have my letters reached you? I ask that you place investigate, please investigate this matter at, at once for the safety of our children. Yesterday, I saw them together again, Mr. Wilson and Wendy, a child at our orphanage. I am very concerned for their safety. The two of them have been oh, acting safety. quite strangely. Sorry, you alright? Mm. Oh, it's terribly odd. By strangely, I mean... Mr. Wilson walking on all fours and nodding, and Wendy appears to be scolding him. I don't know how to explain it, except that it resembled dog training gone wrong. Ooh, it would give me the shivers just thinking about it. Please come investigate this matter as... Wendy's uh, this, this is something I really fucking hate in video games. It's where they write letters as if they're writing dialogue. Yeah, yeah, that, that's... Like, Vampire of the Masquerade Bloodlines does that as well, where the woman who's being chased down by an axe murderer <coughs> decides to stop and write in her diary. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh God, he's about to break through the door. <laughs> writing that down and then it trails off with an ah. No. <laughs> it's like, why were you writing ah as he was hacking you to pieces? Why did you write in your diary at all? You should have been barricading that door, you silly tart. Yeah. You don't have time to fucking write in your diary. Like. The letter ends there. Now, and again, if you do end up putting those things into your letter, you don't fucking post it to the police. <laughs> Until you end up getting fucking locked up for hysteria. Mm. Perhaps it matter a bit of dress publicly. Things wouldn't have turned out as they did. But well, my aunt had ball sheep and my uncle. Adults are so selfish. It's a cop. Yes, but he did little. He's too busy speaking to animals. And that's why he, uh, he, he, he let the guy fucking go get away with it. It's like, hey, you have to deal with a particularly rambunctious squirrel. <laughs> now, now, now! You can't, you can't move there. Ah, sorry. Again, the fucking hitbox is on this for a bit. Mm. Um, hmm, that it really, that really shouldn't be open. Let's let's just see. see. <coughs> nice try. I think I did open it and left it open. <laughs> ah, let me check it. Oh. Were you going out into the main hallway or into the... Main hallway, yeah. And out. Okay. Uh, main hallway's out here, right? Yeah. We can't go downstairs into the basement. Like, there's rooms there where we can look at the films. And all yeah, the shit. yeah, yeah. We found this stuff down there, yeah. <coughs> <coughs> can I get my axe out? <laughs> oh, I can't. No. Look at it, though. Fuck. Think it's time we put this to bed. Take a night, Crystal Rose. So the bad ending would have not given us this epilogue. Yeah. Hmm. Small locker, <laughs> but it was just for me. My name was even on it. They made me feel welcome. Oh. I was so happy I'd move my shoes in and out over and over again. Wow, what a fucking dichotomy from the rest of the game. Yeah. All of these things that I tried to interact with before are interactable in an epilogue. We, we never, never use them, bros. Yeah. <clears throat> This, this broke me. I, I knew they put too much effort into the assets. I knew it. Vindication. These are genuine tears. 
Ah, so she was actually really so, happy at the beginning. Can you enter with the post then of the of the headmaster? <laughs> One day, Mr. Hoffman suddenly disappeared. disappeared. Clara and Miss Martha soon followed, follow, leaving me and the other orphans alone. Oh, so Lord of the Flies. Yeah. Fern. <laughs> I can interact with you the fern. You can interact with the fern. Why is there more effort put into this epilogue than the rest of the game? <laughs> I think they put it did into they start, did this, Was this the starting point of the development? No, go. Get out the fucking front door. I want to go to the head. Please. Please, Neil. Please, for me. Go for it. For me. If you want to go home now, and I, I can just sky down through the epilogue. I, I can I can play through it as when you guys leave. I just need to I need to know. I, I need to know. Okay. Ah, the painting's still been defaced. <clears throat> it's a picture of Mr. Hoffman when he was a young man. He was so proud when he showed it to us. He never caught the one who doodled <laughs> on it. But I know who did it. I saw Thomas trying to move the ladder on the day it happened. <laughs> All this shit that you couldn't interact with. Prize collection of fine dishes. We would sometimes sneak them out and play house with them Aww. in the attic. But that's our little secret. It's, she was so happy at the start. <coughs> yeah. 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 That's fair. Yeah. So you have to play through the whole game to get this really sweet epilogue where you can just decide what you want to do with movies and music. yeah yeah you have to do the good end that's clever enough like it's, it's if, you, if, it's, if you're on level with the game and you realise like you're not to, to continue the cycle of violence or well or yeah, rather well, let yeah. the stray dog do it himself I, I'm assuming that like there's a point in the fa final fight where he hits his knees and says I'm sorry holding his hands out mm. and you're kind of like moral choice type yeah. of thing yeah <clears throat> Or you just kill him with that? Well, yeah, yeah, you just shoot him with it, you know. Because I, like I say, I don't imagine him like surviving many shots. So it is. There's only one bullet from the gun. Yeah. Is, oh well, then sure. I went around. The so, there. Yeah, so like instinctively, you would just go and you. <gasps> oh, hello. There's the fucking pitchfork things. The spooky things. The broom. They sweep away everything that's dirty, including disobedient children. Ah. It was a scary story that started as a rumor and spread like wildfire. Fuck that's me. That's where they got the monsters from. Where the imps came from. And the dolls that were being made in the basement. Yeah. And the, fuck me. They made up a story to scare themselves. Mr. Hoffman loved the broadcast over the PA system. While we were cleaning, while we were eating, and even after we were in bed. He always announced our names in the order of his favourites. I had it. We'd all try our best to win his approval and be the first one to be called. Fuck. He never called my name. Not once. Well, we know why that is. I thought it was all rather silly anyway. Not three. Mm. And what the fuck was he reading? The book is open. It's gonna let us! Two, 2nd of March 1930. Recently the children have been engaging in odd activities. And spreading disturbing rumours. Rumours about creatures that come up to children who don't clean up and stray dogs that are kidding up small tots. It's all very bizarre. 16th of August 1930. Today I was busy catching up on my work when Clara came by to offer me a hand. I guess my teaching paid off. I was grateful for her kindness. In the wee hours of the morning she was still working so I gently took her to bed. Mm. I can hardly believe it. My little Clara, bless her heart, is already 16 years old. She tells me she wants to stay at the orphanage and help with the daily chores. Maybe I should seriously consider the offer. Tomorrow I'll discuss it with Martha. Ugh. Mm. At the time it seemed so frightening. Were those scary things that attacked me just figments of my imagination? 20, 24th of August 1930. This is simply inexcusable. My precious koi is gone. The children must be responsible. I won't stand for this. Where is Diana? What has she been up to? My opinion of her will suffer because of this. Oh, that's what we saw. The diary continues, but the last page is particularly interesting. It's Mr. Hoffman's last entry before he disappears. 11th of November 1930. I am leaving the orphanage. 
Clara's here to look after things and the children are quickly growing up. I've done right and fulfilled my duty. Bloody hell, all the trouble started when that wretched child arrived. I've done nothing to deserve this. <coughs> That's the end of the diary. We never saw Mr. Hoffman again. Why did he leave his diary? Mm, good question. Koi. Koi. <gasps> he did the right thing. I know, I know you're in a very stinky place. Oh, they flushed him. That's why the fish. The fish enemies. Because that rag Diana put my, to my face smelled just awful. But no matter how clever or fast you are, there's no escaping. I used to have like pet fish. Mm. I know exactly the fucking smell. Yeah, that's beautiful. I know exactly what you mean. You're like a mermaid in captivity, adapting to a new reality. Leaving your home behind. Did you find happiness? <gasps> okay, yeah, no, this is. They put so much more effort into this epilogue. I was going to say, epilogue. they locked away so much in this <laughs> epilogue. <laughs> but then we couldn't interact with them during the game, otherwise, that would just tell us the story. Yeah, exactly, yeah, that's what I'm saying. This is your reward for figuring does it, still it out. It does! <laughs> this is your reward for figuring out the story. That day, Mr. Hoffman disappeared, like, like he was running away from something. He had tried too hard to be someone he wasn't. Now, my thoughts are, is this us just rationalizing everything in our head and all the horrible stuff happened? That's what this comes across mm. as. There's no, too much for many wants to escape those restrictions. However, children and adults live in the same world and we must both play by society's rules. Yeah, this is what this feels like. It feels like we've come to terms with the, with, with the, with the grief and trauma. But we're also downplaying it a little bit. Yeah. You know? What a, what a good little girl. She's decided to help me out of the kindness of her heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's not so at all. I believe that I will leave the orphanage in her care. She is 16 after all, a full-grown woman. And she has no life of her own to speak of. I, I, guys, it's quarter past seven. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit, son. I think that cloth might be broken. <laughs> That's even implying it was set to begin with. Yeah, it's right twice a day. Uh, hello? Where's that from? Somebody just called me Jennifer. The sloppy jarring must be Thomas's. See what happens when you give him chalk, the walls, the floors, to him it's one big canvas. Ah, oh, that was Thomas's doing. Thank God we figured that out, plot all out. More ghouls. <laughs> oh yeah. I I think I'm. Just, we we showcased a little bit. Uh, On Halloween, we all dressed up in costumes. Everyone else wore bags over their heads and stared at me through tiny holes. Their blank faces and muffled voices. It scared me like you wouldn't believe. That's why. Is it really you under there, I asked, fearing it was someone else? Something else, even. But no one would answer me. It explains everything. Yeah. Genuinely. Fucking childhood trauma. Amanda was always more sensitive about her looks than anyone else. Yeah. One day, she was given severe scolding by Miss Martha. That's because Miss Martha's lipstick had gone missing. Ooh. The lipstick was never found, but I know Amanda took it. I've seen her applying it late at night. 